Hello, uh, this will be the start of a two-part video on APA style, mainly for the students in EME 6062. You've worked through some of the modules now, and you've uh, began working on gathering your references. But a challenging part is putting them into APA style and getting all of the little details correct. You found quality resources already using the library um, at University of Central Florida and or Google Scholar and other uh, resources like the reference list of leading authors, uh, literature reviews, for example. And now uh, you've already probably listed the resources and evaluated their quality. And you're taking the higher quality references and you're putting them in a worksheet. So I've um, done a take before that I'm doing a second take now on for this video. And these were the ones that I selected. I will show how to do that from scratch in this video. First, it's good to look over the APA style handbook and some of the references that are available in the modules. The university has two videos on this page and other information on many other pages about APA style. So I would recommend watching these. The first video on this page is um, in-text citations and the second one is about your reference list which comes near the end of your document. So. I would recommend um, looking at these now before you continue, but then keep in mind some of this information is a little dated, like here they have the retrieve uh, date, and the date is no longer uh, suggested to be included, the date you retrieved it is not required in APA style anymore. Um, so you might find some of your references using Google Scholar as a starting point, so let's say I put in here. In this um, instance, I've actually um, already selected this article. So I'm assuming you've selected your articles too. If you're accessing it from the university here, you'll be able to download it directly. But even if you're not, a quick way is to copy the title and put it in the library tool, UCF, um, library.ucf.edu, and then log in and search on here, and then you'll be able to download the PDF. Uh, usually, uh, the first result is the best one. Sometimes you have to check to make sure they're not maybe a, a critique of the article or something like that. Uh, so then I would save the PDF somewhere and, and name the file so you remember it. Um, and here we see that we have the title and uh, the DOI is up here, the journal, but we might be aided a bit by actually doing a general Google search. And then on that Google search, we'll get a web page from the publisher, Springer link of the journal that could be helpful. At this point, I'm going to put this on the left side. And um, then on the right side, I'll have this. I, I've done it already, but I, I'll show how I would build this from scratch. So here you see I have already changed the Times New Roman font. It was on Arial, but make sure you watch out for that and put it on Times New Roman 12 point. This worksheet has the um, paragraph indentation set to hanging already, uh, which should be 0 0.50 inches, 0 0.51 is close. And it also uh, has an area for source type, which will be journal in this case. So if we were building this from scratch, which I do recommend getting uh, competent at, because when you're using, say, library tools and you were to go and uh, use their citation, it's going to be quite incorrect. Like here, we see that they've omitted the volume number, they've omitted the page number range, and um, they've omitted a capital B here, because that should be capitalized if it comes after a colon. And they've uh, failed to um, use an initial here. It should be F period because that's not a last name. You can copy this, but then you'd have to make a lot of edits to it. So this one is by one author. Um, actually, um, I guess there is a chance that the last name of this person is 
um, Fei Ming, Fei Peng. I'm not sure about that, but it's definitely not Ming Fei. Oh, um, in that case, it could be that because um, in, in other areas of the um, world, it's customary to put the last name first. Um, like, for example, the dictator of North Korea, Kim uh, John Un. Kim is his last name. So I think that might be. Um, you might have to do a little bit of research on it in this case. So we might take this person and go to Google and, and see what we can find out about this person. And that will be helpful to know how to format their last name. So it looks like it's pretty clear that their last name is Pang, and then uh, their first and middle name are Ming Fei, based on this page from uh, Hong Kong University. So then we have some guidance there on how to format their last name. And so you would type that in that manner, find where it was, um, uh, and then we need the year. And you follow the last initial with a period. Even if it was the name of an organization, there would be a period here. And then the parentheses for the year and another period. And then the title. Note that uh, they didn't do the title in APA style because after a colon, you capitalize the next word. But you don't capitalize every word because um, we just use sentence case, not title case. Then we need to know the journal, which is shown here. And we need to put that in italics. Next, uh, we need the volume and possibly the issue number. We see the volume is 38, so I'll put that there and then disable italics. Uh, and, and we can look and see if we need the issue number. Uh, a rule of APA style is that you must omit the issue number if uh, the uh, issues are continuously paginated between issues in the same volume. That is APA 6th edition. In 5th edition, you would include um, the issue number anyway. We don't know what they're going to do in 7th edition because this rule is quite annoying. In this case, we see the 6th edition starts at page 523. So we need to omit the issue number. Do not include 6 in parentheses because it did not start from 1. Uh, the next thing we need is the page number range. So that's going to be starting at 659 and then ending at 677. And here I hold down the Alt key and type 0150 on the 10 digit numeric keypad to generate an end dash instead of a hyphen because a hyphen is not the correct uh, typographic symbol to use. That's on Windows, Microsoft Windows, using a um, keyboard that has a 10-digit keypad. If you're on Mac or a laptop that has a smaller keyboard, you could just copy and paste this symbol from somewhere else, or there's another way to get to it up here somewhere. Uh, we're not quite done yet. Nowadays, most articles have DOIs, Document Object Identifiers. We can pull this one from um, the URL. We see that it's here. It's also included in the actual manuscript, uh, published manuscript at the top, uh, wherever I put that. Anyway, the best format nowadays is to use HTTPS DOI.org slash um, the number. And then you can test that link to see if it works. And you'll see that it redirects us to uh, this URL, link.springer.com. Uh, it used to be you would use dx.doi. Now it's recommended not to because they stopped doing that. And Crossref um, has just recommended using uh, doi.org. The next one I've picked out comes from a uh, proceeding. And so that is a little bit different. Um, a very useful reference is the APA style blog. Of course, the handbook is helpful as well, but the style blog covers a lot of obscure issues that you wouldn't um, see in the handbook. And it's written by employees of the American Psychological Association. So it's an authoritative source. Uh, here they tell us about how to publish various uh, proceedings from a journal 
And in this case, the article I picked out is a published proceeding, so it's going to follow a template similar to this. And one option would be to take this and actually um, paste it in here and modify it. But when you do that, you want to make sure to use the key text only because otherwise we get the green background and we don't want that. I will move this down here, which is the completed reference. And uh, now we will go back to that article. This article is in a uh, Learn Tech Lib journal, and it has a whole bunch of authors. So you could look this up on the style blog as well if you had forgotten how to format it when it has more than seven authors. But what we do is we start just like we normally would, including the first um, six authors. It's helpful to have both windows open like this so we can look back and forth. If you have two monitors, you can use those, or if you don't, there's a keyboard shortcut holding down the Windows key, and um, then you would press the left or right arrow key while holding down Windows to make it appear on the left or right side of the screen without having to drag like that manually. Uh, so now we've gotten um, five authors. The sixth author is another Kim. Um, and then after that, we want to do comma, space, period, space, period, space, period. But um, I, I think we need an ampersand too. Yep. And uh, the last author. That's the uh, format for a reference with more than seven authors. So we're editing the reference that we got from uh, the style blog. And now we need to change that year to 2002. Um, and then after that, we would include the title. We can actually pull that from here if we'd like, but then we can't just paste it like that because it'll be um, the wrong format. We want to do keep text only. Right click and then keep text only. And then we want to have the rest of the title in lowercase. Uh, next, we actually see that they have an example of a citation here, but it's not a perfect example. It has at least a dozen um, issues with it, but we can follow it for the next part, which is that uh, this article appears in an edited book, and for an edited work uh, containing multiple articles from authors, we've included the authors of the articles first, the title of the article, and then we put in because it's in an edited book. And these are the editors. Notice the format is different here. We use the first initial, middle initial if they have one, which they don't in this case, and the last name, and then an ampersand, and the second one, if there were three, it would be comma, and then the third, the second one, like let's say it's B Smith, it would be like that if there were three, but we just have two. Uh, and then in parentheses, EDS period. If it was just one editor, that would be ED. That stands for editor or editors in this case. And, and now we have a comma, and now we have the title of the book, which is Proceedings of. Uh, uh, and then here we see that they've done ed hyphen media in all caps. But up here we see the name of the uh, organization is not like that. So I'm going to use the correct name. And then instead of two hyphens here, I would just use a colon. A lot of this is um, subjective. It's surprising that there is some subjective to APA style references. Now because this is um, the title of a conference, I believe it is capitalized in title case, not sentence case. Uh, normally we would use an Oxford comma, but in this case it appears that the title of the um, book actually omits the Oxford comma, so we have to follow what they did. That's why I don't have a comma after hypermedia. Now I want to turn off italics. I usually use the keyboard shortcut control I. You can also click it in the font area of the home ribbon in Microsoft Word 2016. 
and uh, now I need to do an open parentheses, close parentheses, and the page number range, which because it's multiple pages is PP period. If it was just one page, it would be P period. 1615 and dash 1621 period. And then the next thing I need is the um, city, the state, the country, if it was another country, but if it's the United States, you don't include United States or USA and APA 6th edition. And for the state, you should actually use the U.S. Postal Services abbreviation, which is um, CO for Colorado. And then the other part would probably be the same. Except that I don't really need to put in that it's AACE in parentheses. That's not required. And then this retrieved information is not needed because I have plenty of information here to be able to locate the reference. It's actually not recommended to include both. It would be one or the other. Uh, so that's two references in APA style in your um, reference worksheet. And so you would keep going and do all 10. You might have blog posts. You might have websites. Most of your references should probably be books, journals, uh, or uh, you know chapters of edited books that are all like, peer-reviewed for the most part. So you'll proceed in that way, and uh, you'll use the APA style blog if you need it and the handbook. That's the end of video one. In the next video, I'll get into how to format your Microsoft Word manuscript in APA style.